Hello Minecraft fans and fellow Christians. What? Oh, the diamond. Right. Well, today I'll be covering the Twilight Forest, which requires me to throw a diamond in this little pool of water. Like so. The lightning is normal. Although, be warned, the fires might catch on fire, so you'd have to take out any fire that might accidentally happen. You need this many resources to build the portal frame, and then later throw in the diamond. Now let's jump on in. And welcome to the Twilight Forest. Thought I'd light up the area a little bit, but other than that, it's mostly like this. And yes, there are dungeons in the distance, but there's an easier way to find these dungeons. First you have to find a raven, or the commonly looking blackbirds, and get their feather by killing them sadly, but anyway. You'll, and these are torchberries. I'll get to how to find them in a little while. This is a map focus, map focus, sorry. And this is a blank magic map. Now luckily for y'all, I already created one. I'll show all of it, but this is basically how it works. It can show you a great further distance than even the biggest normal map. Now luckily I already have this one still with me. It shows all the terrain and each icon represents something different. Now the ones that look like faces or helmets are actually bosses. All the others are either the representation of a dungeon or maybe even a hollow hill. Now the closest hill is a small one. If you can look find my icon next to a guy with a crown you will see that I'm facing towards a, the one of the smallest hollow hills. Oh yes, these are actually houses that are sort of like dungeons, but just smaller. And if you're lucky, certain ones will have basements. Although sadly I activated the trap, sorry. Even this kind will have a possible basement if you look under a spawner. Ah, the hollow hill. Now this is now bear in mind this is only the smallest one. Yeah that's normal for one of the creatures here. Yeah, there's a lot going on here, but there are chests with loot. And if you're lucky, you'll find a torchberry in one of them. Ah, red cap goblins. They're a pain, but killing them in the right hills an achievement, actually. I think it's a middle size. And there are plenty of spires here, as well as ores. Now this is a medium hill icon right here and as you can see it is slightly bigger than the small one that we were originally at. Now this is what torch berries look like normally just hanging off of dirt, stone, whatever. And as you might expect there's more monsters and all underneath one of these bigger ones. and even some of the other stranger creatures and if you look at the leftmost side towards the middle of it you'll see that I'm near the biggest size hill hollow hill and along with more monsters there's also more loot and possible rewards 
I know it's a little hard to see, but this is how it is. Oh, right. How silly of me. Well, don't let these pinch beetles get you. They'll basically grab you and you won't be able to gr get away right away. Ah, uh, fire beetle. Yes, they shoot fire at you. So be careful of them. Now, if you have the ore chickens and all, this won't be absolutely necessary, but it's still neat. You can find any ore that would appear in the overworld here. In any of these hollow hills, but there's more of it in the bigger ones, in any case. There's also some other things to explore on the surface. One of them being is the quest rams or biome, which is, happens to be here. Now, the more I head inward, the more the ease, the quicker I'll be able to find him. The quest ram. Ah, there we are. I heard him, but where is he? Huh. Oh well, might as well get to this real quick. He will accept any and all colored wool that's in this chest here. I will give him this, and he will give me a special reward. Now to actually find him. Ah, I thought it was a little closer, but anyway. This is him. Normally he'd take the wool, but I'm in creative mode. Well, I mean, he would disappear from my inventory. And as you can see, he's actually sort of expanding along the back as you add each color. Consume it, Boz. It gives you a questing ram trophy along with some other nice rewards. Although definitely one of the more interesting one is the crumble horn. Let me empty my inventory and I'll show you in a moment. Mm, seems a little mean, but I'll use this pillar as an illustration. It turns stone-related things into, well, space stone, cobblestone, and then gravel, and then into nothing. And apparently itemizes dirt. I guess stone bricks are immune. Well, let me set up a demonstration real quick. There. This should be easy enough. Uh, need some gravel or flint? Heh. <laughs> well, the thing is, this takes up durability as you use it, so you may want to use mending if that's available to you. Now, this is a trophy that you can place on your own head as, if you so choose. All it looks so ridiculous on me, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, you can also place it on a s solid block, like so. Although it probably look better on an open area. But you get the idea. Now, another interesting thing to note is it the sky eternally looks like that. Which means that there's no sun, and monsters don't spawn above ground, but if they walk out from caves, they don't get burned either, if they're undead or something like that. And this place also actually has deer, if that's of interest to any hunters in the audience. And... They used to be just retextured cows. Oh, that's right. 
transforming po transformation power. This actually does change a deer into a cow. Along with some of the other mobs around here, but other than that, it's not interesting. Oh, and if you go exploring a well, in a hollow hill and find a maze map focus, you'll need that later for a boss. Oh, well, speaking of which, you're probably interested in the progression system of this. You have to defeat certain bosses in a certain order to progress to the next one. Now, if you look in the upper left corner, you'll see something that looks like a big brown biome. That's the last area, I'll tell you that much. And now, I'll actually head on over to story time. Story time. The part of the show where, you, where I, William, comes out and tells you a story. Usually related to the mod at the, mod at the time. Well, hey there again. Time to tell you a story about the Twilight Forest. As it turns out, there are notes from a forgotten explorer that you can find throughout the Minecraft mod. If you happen to go to a dungeon area that you can't actually enter yet because you haven't defeated the previous boss, you find a special note in the hands of a blue creature called a kobold. Now, I'll show you the inside of this place. This used to be one of the little dungeon houses that you'd see. And I repair, repaired it up, made it a little nicer, and, well, just decided to make it home. But now, on to the first story. The Notes on a Pointy Tower. An explorer's notebook, not on by monsters. I have begun examining the strange aura surrounding this tower. The bricks of the tower are protected by a curse, stronger than any I've seen before. The magic from the curse is boiling off into the surrounding area. In my homeland, I would have had many options for dealing with ma this magic, but here my supplies are limited. I shall have to do more research. Many entries later. A breakthrough! In my journeys, I sighted a huge snake-like monster in a decorated courtyard nearby. I picked up a worn-down, discarded green scale. The magic in the scale seems to have the curse-breaking properties I need, but the magic is too dim. I may need to acquire a fresher specimen directly from the creature. Now, the pointy tower, as it happens, was that structure you saw by my portal. I can't quite go there yet in survival mode. If I try to break the bricks in it, they'll just simply reappear instantly. I have to defeat the huge snake-like creature called the Naga. If you've played enough of the right arcade games, you have seen such a creature like into this. Now there's other books in this series that I will read later on, but they're each another story for another time. However, for now, we can defeat the Naga. I'll probably end the video after that. However, I accidentally set him off, triggered him, essentially, when I was getting a little too close, sadly. Usually they just stay in a spawner and then pop out when you get close enough. Now let's get on to it. Sorry for any lag. In the old games, you used, well, versions, you used to only be able to hit his head to deal any damage. Right now, there's only a major reduction in my damage to it. As you can see, hit, getting a hit is a little hard. Let me try the boat. Hmm. And you'll be getting smaller as 
I defeat him. However, he'll also be getting faster. Less late slowing him down, essentially. And yet another trophy. And like the previous one, I can put it on my head if necessary. It looks something like this. And the scales can actually be used to make armor. So for some reason, I only chose to let me make the chest plate and leggings. I know it's their choice to whether or not I can make these, but in any case. Why did I quit the music? I liked it. But in any case, these trophies can actually go on your wall. I sort of like use them as trophies, but in any case. It was actually nice seeing y'all. Thanks for watching. I'll try and continue this series in the next video. The Twilight Lich is coming up next. If it's short enough, I may even do another boss after him. Bye y'all.